I want to thank everyone for being here, spending your afternoon with us. It's an honor to be able to help Mrs. Edwards. And just to give you a, a really quick information about the play, it was written about 2004. Uh, my husband read it, wrote the play, I'm sorry, to honor Harry T. Moore and Harriet B. Moore, who were educators, owners of an orange grove. They raised their two children, Anna and Evangeline, right here in Bavard County. And uh, Harry Moore was the first president of the NAACP. I know I'm repeating things that a lot of you already know, but for the young people, people that are new to the area that don't know about the Moors, I just want to give you a quick blurb about them. Uh, they did a lot for the community. Uh, tragically, even though Mr. Moore was the first NAACP president in Florida, state president, and he established a lot of the, the voting, he increased the voting numbers back in the, he started in the 30s up into the 50s until his death. Uh, with, despite all the great things he, that he did for our community and for our nation, he was murdered when a bomb was placed under his home. Uh, the play highlights the things that the Moors did and also tries to give a little information about the impact Mr. Moore had on the community. Because even though he died before the, you know, the official civil rights era, there was a lot of things that he established that led to greater things that we know about. And I won't say because the, the play will you know, fill in all those blanks. Um, the, the writer of the play is my husband, Augusta Williams, Jr. Uh, and a lot of the cast members were volunteers, um, family members, and other people that have the same vision and dream that we have to help Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Edwards and to also spread the word about the, the great work of the Moors. So at this uh, time, we will start the play, Unfinished Business. This is where thou stand. 
time can change and rearrange everything but the conscience of man. Like the melody of a song that you would never hear again. December 25th, 1951, 9 a.m. Harry Tyson Moore is busy at work on the Grove and Place in the midst of a double holiday. But it was not only Christmas Day, it was his 25th wedding anniversary. Ladies and gentlemen, the play, Unfinished Business. Christmas Day? You know, Mama, it's Christmas Day for those boys down in Groveland, too. Hopefully, by this time next year, they'll be home. Look, son, I'm not trying to be pessimistic, but you're no longer the Florida NAACP president. And on second thought, you're no longer the Florida State Coordinator. And on third thought, you're no longer a member of that ungrateful organization. But still, you work tirelessly and faithfully on this case on Christmas Day and your anniversary? Why put yourself and your family through all this anguish? Mom, you know I love you too, but there's still so much injustice that's been undone. Mm. I still have a lot of work to do. Lord have mercy. You sure is Johnny's boy. You have the same spirit, the same dedication, the same determination and the same stewardship to do a good job. Even though it was the white man's train station, the responsibilities of Johnny's was to make sure the water tanks was filled. It wasn't a day that went by that there was an empty water tower. You would think he was the president himself, but still, at the end of the day, all he wanted was the satisfaction of a job well done. Look, son, I know your work is important to you. Your work is important, but I just don't want you to forget about yourself or your family on Christmas and your anniversary. Oh, man. Oh. All this talking has made me exhausted. I'm going to retire. Son, Merry Christmas and Happy Anniversary. Mama, thank you. Merry Christmas, Daddy. Oh, by the way, can I sleep in Evangeline's room tonight? I promised to have her bed all made up before she comes home. Do I have your word on that? Yes, Daddy. Okay. Oh, wee. I can't wait until tomorrow. I'm so excited. I don't see how possible it is to sleep tonight. Oh, you'll find a way. Anna, I have milk warming on the stove. So milk? Coco. Milk? What about Coco? Come on, child. Honey, do you know what time it is? It's 10.15. Hmm, very good. Do you know what day it is? Christmas Day. And what else? Is that all? No. No, it isn't. It's our anniversary. Honey, I'm so sorry. There's just so much unfinished business. I completely forgot. I know, honey, I know. It's Christmas Day, the 25th of December. You know our anniversary. It's also on the 25th of December. We've been married for 25 years. I know that tune. You should know it. You sung it to me the night you proposed. I remember. You remember the words? Of course. Will you sing them to me, please? No, ladies first. Love very good. Love very kind. 
love very sweet, love very fine, love very good, love very kind, love very sweet, love very fine, love is all in me, reserved just for you. My love is yours, your love is mine. Love feels so fine, like a vintage wine. It only gets better through the course of time. Love feels so fine, like a vintage wine. It only gets better through the course of time. Seems kind of dumb. Seems kind of dumb. But love full of fun. Love full of fun. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make no sense. But love pays the rent. Love pays the rent. No, love still lives on. It remains so strong. Love is the goal that can't be sold. Love is the strength that fills the cup with a dream. Love is intelligence, the only real element. Love is an art that beats the drum of heart. Love is the one that breezes through the storm. That breezes through the storm. Even after we're gone, love still lives on. What's warmer than the sun? Two hearts that beat as one. 25 years have come and passed. 25 years have come and passed. But our love still lasts. Though it seems like yesterday instead of the past. station. A vanished Lamar just arrived 
home from college and waiting, anticipating the arrival of our parents. Oh, it's so great to be home. A day after Christmas is still so great to be home. What was the most beautiful gift I ever received? When I look at my life from behind, I ask myself this many of times. After 18 years of love, hate, and good deeds, what was the most beautiful gift I ever received? After a day of meditation, it hit me on the temple. The answer to this question is really very simple. Unlike the unfortunate others, I was blessed with a beautiful mother. And I ought to be glad because God gave me such a wonderful dad. I will always remember, no, I will never forget. And I will pray for those that are so sad. Merry Christmas to you, Mom and Dad. No, 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 John. No, please. Your money no good here. No, Mr. Johnson. I, I can't accept that here. Uh, the child, you got to stop disrespecting your elders. I'm trying to respect my elders. Not by disrespecting my decision. Mr. Johnson. Uh, you... no, no, just call me Frank. Laid out the 1,200 miles. You deserve that respect. Mr. J Frank, mm -hmm. I am the youngest of two daughters. Yes. My parents' portfolio expands from education to agriculture and activists, uh, which right. they have achieved excellence in all three. Amen. Though I have their unconditional and unlimited support, it is still an unwritten rule that I not take advantage of the blessings that God has given me. I am to respect my God, my family, my community, myself, and my elders. So please, accept this gratuity that you more than earned. I know the ideal wage for a quarter, three meals and a cot. Us as Negroes have to do what we can to support one another. And your initiative to go way beyond the call of duty on my behalf means a lot to me. So please, accept this gratuity that you more than earned. My, my child. Your parents had did their job well, but you speak with such elegance and honesty that it brings me to tears to deny your offer. I'm going to tell you why. Let me tell you a story about Leroy Bradwell. Though he's not a kin or acquaintance of mine, let me tell you the tragic tale that links your father and my family. 1944, Leroy Bradwell returned from the Second Big War, a decorated soldier. He served his country well. He was abducted by the stereotypical white racist mob that claimed he violated the rights of a white woman. But in actuality, he was at the bus station drinking a Coke. No matter what we do, white no matter what we do, white folks attack what they don't like. Right or wrong, they killed that boy. And the authorities did nothing. And they wasn't going to do nothing until your father stepped in, playing the role of sheriff, lawyer, and detective. I believe he did, what any, did more than what any other lawyer, sheriff, or detective could do. He brought attention to the matter. He provoked a response. And the miracle about that, there was no retribution took place the rest of that year. I mean that when our black soldiers came home from the war, they was protected. One of them soldiers was my nephew. I can't prove it, but I believe
believe that the investigation done by your father on Leroy Brightwell is the reason why my nephew is home and alive today. When I saw your name on that passionate list, I looked back in the cabinet to see your face. I saw your father in your face. Mrs. Moore, I can't accept your gratuity. For naturality, your father has already paid it. Let's get a move on there, man. There's other passengers to attend to. I, I, I'm on it. Yes, sir, boss. I'm right on it. I, I'm right on it. Don't, don't, don't touch that bag. That's my job. Mrs. Moore, is that your family over there? Thank you, Mrs. Moore. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry I'm Christmas on it. You. Don't hold on. Ladies, don't you touch that bag. That's my job. That's what I get paid for. Hmm. It must be late. Maybe I told them the wrong time. Evangeline. Uncle George. Honey. It brings me great grief to reveal to you the terrible news. Last night, your house was bombed. Your father's dead. And your mother's in the hospital. Come, child. We have a long and difficult day. <laughs> When I was a little girl, my mother would always say to me, Rose, when you moan, the devil don't understand what you're singing about. But I'm tired of moaning. I'm hurt. My son is dead. And I want the devil to hear and understand every single word that I live my life to open. 